Hello everyone, in this video we are going to practically demonstrate the Brunstrom treatment exercises that can be utilized to facilitate tone and movement recovery in a stroke or a hemiplegic patient during the flaccid phase. Before we start with the practical demonstration, let's first understand what all important components should be kept in mind while designing exercises during the stage 1 and 2 of hemiplegia recovery. All the exercises that are utilized in the stage 1 and 2 of hemiplegia recovery are intended to increase the background tension and produce reflexive movements in the flaccid muscles of upper and lower limb. This can be achieved by utilizing three important treatment strategies which are use of the postural reflexes or reactions, use of associated reactions and use of local stimulation over the affected muscle in the form of tapping, electrical stimulation, stretch or resistance to facilitate the muscle spindle activity. Any reflexive movements that are gained by the above three treatment strategies should be followed by volitional efforts from the patient to further increase the background tension and improve motor control. So let's start with the practical demonstration in which we will learn the above treatment strategies by giving examples of few exercises. So let's consider if this is a stroke patient who has left sided hemiplegia. The first exercise that we are going to demonstrate is intended towards improving the background tension in the hip muscles and gaining reflexive movements. So for the preparation of this exercise, I'm going to ask the patient to take the normal hip and knee into the flexion position. And now I'm going to passively take the lower limb, which is flaccid into the similar position. Now, because this side lower limb is flaccid, if I am going to leave it, it is going to fall outwards. So the first movement that I will try to reflexively generate is the hip adduction movement on the paralyzed side. And how I'm going to do this is by utilizing the Remistees adduction phenomenon, which we have already discussed in our previous videos. So for this, the therapist is going to place one hand medially over the unaffected side, just proximal to the knee joint. While maintaining the support over the affected side knee, now the therapist is going to ask the patient to produce a strong effort from the hip adductor muscles and the therapist is going to resist it in such a manner so that no or little movement is produced on the normal side. Now while the patient will be generating this strong effort from the normal side, what we are going to see is a reflexive increase in the background tension and reflexive movements setting in on the paralytic side lower limb. So the lower limb which was actually falling outward will now start moving in the adduction direction. The therapist can also try rubbing or tapping over the affected side adductor muscles to further generate background tension by stimulating the muscle spindles. Now similarly the therapist can also try an exercise in which the therapist keeps the hand between both the knees and now again ask the patient to generate a strong contraction from the normal side adductor muscles. Now when both the knees approximate with each other, the therapist next takes them towards the paralyzed side and this time instructing the patient to not allow the knee to fall outward. The resistance is maintained throughout this exercise. The point from which the patient loses the adductor tension, the patient is again brought back to the neutral position and the same exercise is then repeated. So now let's take up two or three examples for the hemiplegic upper limb to facilitate tone and movement recovery. So now this time let's consider this patient to be a right sided hemiplegic. So the first exercise that we are going to demonstrate involves taking the hemiplegic upper limb into the mid range of elbow flexion. Now after placing the hemiplegic upper limb in this position, the therapist next rotates the head and neck of the patient towards the normal side. This helps in recruiting the ATNR reflex activity, thereby generating further flexor tone over the hemiplegic side. The therapist next starts tapping or rubbing over the muscle that we need to contract. And what we are going to see is a reflexive movement being produced in the hemiplegic elbow joint. Similarly, to facilitate the elbow extensor movements, the patient preparation would be to first rotate the head and neck 
towards the hemiplegic side and this time tapping or rubbing over the triceps muscle and at the same time asking the patient to try and extend the elbow joint. Similarly, apart from using the postural reactions, the therapist can also utilize the associated reactions to further facilitate gaining of tone and movement on the flaccid side. So for this, the therapist is going to utilize the imitation synkinesis. That is, the movements on the normal side will be strongly resisted and these will be those movements which we are trying to reflexively generate on the hemiplegic side. So for example, if we are trying to reflexively generate the elbow flexor activity on the hemiplegic side, then at the same time, another therapist is going to resist the forceful contraction of the biceps muscle on the normal side. And similarly, to facilitate the elbow extensor muscles on the hemiplegic side, the therapist on the other side is going to resist the triceps contraction on the normal side. The last treatment tip that I would like to share in this video is that to generate reflexive tension and movements on the paralyzed side, we can also utilize function or task oriented movements from the flaccid phase itself. So let's take up this example in which we can keep a mobile in the hand of the patient and now the therapist passively takes the upper limb into the end range of the functional position. The head and neck of the patient is turned to the opposite side so we are utilizing postural reactions. The other hand of the patient also mimics or imitates the same activity. Now the therapist who will be standing towards the normal side of the patient is going to strongly resist this hold position and the patient is going to be instructed do not let me take the mobile away from you once the patient starts generating strong contraction from these group of muscles now the therapist will ask the patient to also try and hold the right side or the affected side closer to the face and not let the limb fall down and what we are going to interestingly see is that the patient will be able to produce some isometric two eccentric contractions from the paralyzed side even during the flaccid phase. So these were some of the important treatment tips and exercise strategies that can be utilized to facilitate tone and movement recovery in the hemiplegic upper limb during the flaccid phase. I sincerely hope that the information shared by me in this video is going to be helpful for you all. We'll see you in our next video with many more interesting exercises based on Brunstrom concepts. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.